right, all right, all right, YouTubes. Got the bike all washed from the Arizona trip <clears throat> Sunday morning. Gonna take a little rip up the coast. Uh, I'm gonna do a 10,000 mile review on this bike. Even though I'm working two jobs still, I was able to get, um, I've already ridden 10,000 miles on this bike. I picked it up in December last year. And, uh, give a good honest review it's a great motorcycle especially with the way that um, that I have it set up I basically turned a lowrider s into a touring bike into a bagger and for me it works out really well the reason I didn't buy a road glide or a street glide is I got to back my bike up every morning to go to work uh, down my driveway and maneuver it out and down the hill every single morning so I wanted a smaller, lighter bike for that. And when Harley Davidson came out with the soft tail chassis with the mono shock and the rigid mounted engine, I was on board, you know, coming from a victory that had that same setup. And uh, the handling on this bike is ridiculous. It's so good. So, and I don't, you know, I'm not riding two up. I'm not gonna have anybody on the back, so. For a single rider and doing what I want to do it's just perfect for me and it, oh and it also came with a five gallon gas tank so the range is I didn't do any engine work to this bike other than exhaust and some fuel tuners and I can get 220 miles on a tank of gas which actually I can keep up with the guys that have the baggers on long trips This is the 10,000 mile review of the Harley Davidson FXLRS 2020 Lowrider S. As you'll see here, I got the FXR Division saddlebags installed, the Cobra El Diablo 2 in the 1 exhaust, the Russ Wernemount FXRT fairing. We'll come around here and take a look from the back to the front. I'm rocking the Lucky Dave's 13 inch handlebars with the pullback. I have the BMC Corbin Widowmaker set back two inches. You'll see the fit and finish on this motorcycle is incredible. And I have not had any issues on this bike whatsoever in 10,000 miles. I also have the lay down license plate, license plate bracket with uh, turn signal relocation. see here I got the 80 grit Harley Davidson foot pegs I really like these foot pegs uh, they have good size to them you can move your foot around on them it's a great product right here and I have the Bung Kings crash bar going I have the Daymaker LED custom dynamics LEDs so they're run lights and turn signals These Michelin Scorcher tires have been really good. Uh, you'll see there's plenty of wear left in them after 10,000 miles. Uh, we'll see how long we can get out of these tires. I know there were some complaints about the tires. Um, I'm digging these Michelin Scorchers that came with the bike. See, there's plenty of tread left after 10,000 miles. So after 10,000 miles, there's plenty of life left on the brake pads as well, both front and rear. Um, 
So the brake pads are holding up, the tires are holding up. I'll try and show you the, the rear brake pads. I don't know if we'll get a good view with the shadows here, but plenty of uh, life left on the rear brake pads, front brake pads, and again, the tires are holding up really well uh, through 10,000 miles so far. I just want to get a huge shout out to uh, Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. Uh, they make buying a Harley Davidson motorcycle so easy. And I want to thank them for putting this bike together for me and uh, making the business transaction so smooth. Um, no dealer markup there, no hidden costs. If you need a Harley Davidson motorcycle, you know, check out Laidlaw's Harley Davidson in Baldwin Park, California just a great easy way to purchase a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. about this bike the one thing I have had an issue with is the speedo gauge condensating and fogging up um, it doesn't do it all the time but it'll do it it does it sporadically and when it does do it it's my only complaint on the bike so far uh, when it does do it you just can't read the information window that's where it condensates at over the information window where my finger is right there 9:36 in the morning Gorgeous October. Got some type of Navy ship out there cruising. And uh, I love the handling on this bike. I'm running the 114 pretty much stock other than an exhaust and the fuel tuners. And it's got enough power that I need. Like I said earlier, I'm into the gas mileage on this bike for long trips. Um, I was able to get 10,000 miles on it in less than a year and I'm still working two jobs so for me that's not many miles for diehard riders but for myself it's not bad and for the purposes of this review the the bike's holding up good now I know a lot, some people don't like the tires that come on this bike the Michelin Scorchers I'll tell you right now they're above average tires they're, they're good tires they're not bad I've been enjoying them. The front end, the inverted front end on this bike is good. I know a lot of people have upgraded the cartridges in it. I see no need whatsoever to have to upgrade the guts on these forks. They're more than adequate. They work great. The response is perfect. Now I got a, this big heavy fairing on there and it's still working great for me. My rear shock I did change out to the Heritage rear shock when I purchased the motorcycle. And so I don't know what the uh, the Lowrider S rear shock, how it rode with that. I never rode it with the original shock in it. Um, when I picked the bike up, it already had the Heritage rear shock in. Now there are better shocks you can get than the Heritage rear shock, suspension-wise, for this bike. Uh, you can knock yourself out crazy, you get rust worn amount stuff. There's so many options. You can spend a lot of money if you want to. A little uphill pull. Just eat them up. Get the brothers some love. There we go. Uh, just a gorgeous day to be riding. 
2019. I'm trying to think if I've had any other issues with the bike other than the speedo fogging up, condensating. I don't think I have. Uh, well, oh, I'll tell you a story. So, rode out to Sturgis, coming back from Sturgis. Um, I did 910 miles in 12 hours and 40 minutes. And I had hit some long stretches where I was doing 105 miles an hour for over an hour at a time. So when I got back from that trip, it was time uh, to do the oil change. I think I was at like 6,600 miles. Uh, I had done the 1,000 mile service on it, so it was time for its 5,000 mile service. So I got um, all the containers to measure the ounces of fluids. And I measured all my fluids out of my uh, Milwaukee 8. And every one of them was spot on. So there's no fluid transfer, which is not a big issue on the soft tail models. Um, that was some of the chatter back when the Milwaukee 8 came out, especially on the touring models. So no fluid transfer, and I rode the crap out of this thing. Harder than I should have. So the, on this one, it, the motor has not eaten up any oil. Like the trip I just took out to Arizona, there's some videos on my channel. I like three three videos up. I think we did a 20, 2500 mile weekend out to Scottsdale and then up to the Grand Canyon and then back on the east side of the Sierras and then back home to Santa Cruz. I think we, we did about 2500 miles and it didn't burn a drop of oil. I know that was another concern with the Milwaukee 8. Uh, this low the Lowrider S to me is probably, other than the Heritage, I think the Heritage is probably your best bang for the buck. Because you can do so many things with that bike. I'm a huge fan of the Heritage. Um, but overall, if you want to build out a bike different ways, the Lowrider S is killer. There's a lot of people don't like the fact that I turned my Lowrider S into a bagger. But, you know, you can do all kinds of things with this bike. You can make it a badass street thing, you can make it a bagger, you can make it whatever, you know? And it's a, it's a great platform for that. I think I'm gonna stop up here and get some coffee. A little coffee action. I think they got, oh yeah, the store's got some stuff out for Halloween. Let's get this on camera, this should be pretty cool. I got the little purple guy going. Yeah, this big green booger right here. Yeah, there he is, the booger. Boogie Boogie Man. <laughs>